Okay. Where's Chris Smith when you need him? Okay. So you're saying we have so some matrix, and you're saying you want to get out. Uh, so we get the first row by doing this, but you want to operate in place and say times equals three. Right, so we could have done this, we got just a row. Right, but you, I, I, what I understood is that you wanted to change the matrix in, in place. At, yeah. um, so this is, yeah. This is also, I think, how you do it in NumPy. Um, right, so like actually the exact same code. This will be fun. Right, so the exact same code runs in NumPy. It just runs on NumPy array rather than a SymPy matrix. Yeah. Array for copying good interfaces. Are there any questions? Oh, we did. Okay. Well, uh, this is not um, something I'll, sh I'll show you. So, if you go to our documentation, which is stocks.sympy.org, um, this looks really bad here because it's, it's made to be on a, a larger display. Um, here at the top uh, is the our written tutorial, which a lot of what we did today is based on. So if you want to learn more about SimPy, um, I recommend going here. Um, and something to uh, to note here on our docs is down here, um, down here in the bottom, there's this button that says "Show, show SimPy Live Shell." And if you pull this up, um, I don't know. Yeah, that's better. Uh, this is a uh, this is a shell that runs on the Google App Engine, and it's basically just SimPy. So you can you can run uh, any anything any SimPy thing in here, and it's like a little. Um, Basically, a Python shell for SymPy. So uh, here's. I'm not sure why. How to reset this actually? And any on any of these examples, um, if you click on this little green thing here, or if you just click on the example. Um, that's going to send it over here and run it in this shell here. And then you can arrow up and uh, go in and edit one of the examples and play around with it. Um, so you know, if I make this a, a 4 instead of a 2, you can see what that comes up with. So it doesn't come up with anything. And... Um, you can also go to live.simpy.org, and that's just this shell here. Um, this is also uh, has a mobile version, so if you go to it on your phone, it has a nice little SimPy calculator. And if you go to simpygamma.com, uh, this is SimPy's version of Wolfram Alpha. So here's a random example. You just type. You can type in some uh, some function here, and it'll uh, compute uh, 
like this integral here. Um, takes a little while. Let me do something more interesting. Oh, I think so. I'm in a mobile shell here. Oh, here. So, and a, a cool thing here is um, uh, for integrals, or at least some integrals, you can you can see uh, a step-by-step -step method of of uh, how to compute the integral. So here we're doing a, a u substitution, u equals x plus one, um, and then it going through step-by-step -step how to do it. I don't know if you ever used Wolfram Alpha. They used to have this feature. Um, now you have to pay them if you want to use it. Okay, any questions? Um, any thoughts? Yeah, SymPy Gamma. That was SymPy Live. If you go to Simpy, if you just go to our website, simpy.org, it's got links. Uh, if you type something in here, uh, you can go to Simpy Gamma. If you click this button, it'll take you to Simpy Live. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I want either. I think I want this over here. There we go. Okay, um, well, we have about 15 minutes, so I guess I can just show you some cool stuff for 15 minutes. <coughs> X squared minus 1? It's probably because you still have x set to be positive from the previous x. Oh yeah, there's some, there's some, something weird going on there. I got that too. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Yeah, I think there's an there's some bug that was recently introduced to SimPy Live. I don't. I'll have to talk to David Lee about that. David Lee is, uh, or was, um, he just graduated from high school, but he, he wrote most of both of these websites. And he is interning at Continuum right now, so next time I'm there, I'll talk to him. But yeah, um, so we, we mentioned earlier how to do assumptions. Uh, we can do, for example, make X and Y uh, say real equals true, or, or let's do positive equals true. And then... Um, I can say X is real, yes, because anything that's positive is real. And say, um, let's say I make another one, Z equals. And I don't put any assumptions on it. I Z, Z is real. Uh, oops, that should be a Z there. And so what I got here was, uh, was none. So the way the assumptions work is it's uh, it's kind of a three-valued logic. Um, if it's no, if it knows that it's true, it'll give you true. If it knows that it's false, it'll give you false. And if it can't determine either way, it'll give you none. So none either means it could be true, it could be false, or it just means that it couldn't deduce either way. So for example, we know x is positive. So I want to know is x squared positive? The answer is yes. Um, I want to know if x squared minus 1 is positive. The answer is none, because it could be positive or it could not be positive, depending on the, the value of x. And so this is useful because, for example, um, if you take like the square root of something squared, this doesn't simplify to just z. And the reason is that, um, in general, the square root of x squared does not equal x. Um, for example, if x equals negative 1, so if I take negative 1 squared, and I take the square root of that, this is just 1. 
That's because the negative 1 squared is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So um, as far as um, the complex plane goes, you need to have a small enough argument so that when you square, you're not uh, doubling your argument past the, uh, the point where when you cut it in half that you're Is that, did I just lose everybody there? <laughs> okay, never mind about that. But the important thing is here, if x is positive, then the square root of x squared does equal x. So a very common thing in SimPy is that you'll just get these square root of x squared things and you just want them to go away. And the way you do that is you just make everything positive. Assuming it really is positive in your problem. Yeah. Uh, no, it doesn't. I think it just leaves it as square root of x squared at that point. Oh, no, you were, it does do absolute value. Simpy is smarter than I thought it was. Um, earlier we, uh, we were wondering why x to the uh, one-third so this thing here, we wanted to know if this is real. And it gives none here if we print this. And the reason is that if we take, for example, negative 1 to the, well, let's take this expression here. Uh, we had too many parentheses there. So this, let's do a, a, a dot subs x with negative 1. Well, it, that's the cube root of negative 1. Uh, but if I, if I evaluate that, what is that? This is a complex number. So one of the gotchas, um, this isn't specific to SimPy. In fact, if you just do pure Python here, negative 1 to the 1 over 3, um, it'll give you the, the Python complex 0 0.5 plus 0 0.0866j. Um, it's taking the, the uh, principal root in the complex plane, uh, the principal cube root, which is um, this complex number here. Here? Um, sorry. Here? It just doesn't... Um, it, if SimPy doesn't tell you something, it just does, it's because you need to simplify it. So SimPy, in general, tries to do minimal automatic simplification. Um, so you know, it may look like it, it just doesn't it doesn't know anything. Oh no, this is not this is pure Python, right? Right. That's why we have this this J thing here. Um, actually, simplify is not. Um, so there's a. Uh, uh, expand complexes, I think. There are all these expand functions, right? There's different ways you can expand something. So, for example, I can expand logarithms using log x times y equals log x plus log y. Expand complex will try to rewrite an expression as a plus bi, where a and b are real. And if I do that on, oh, if I do that on here, on the cube root of negative 1, it's 1 half plus square root of 3i over 2. If I just do it on um, with the x in there, uh, I get some crazy thing with arctan 2. And, uh, but assumedly, if I put x equals negative 1 in here, it'll give me that. So yeah, I guess that would be a, a third thing that computer algebra systems are good at is just knowing random formulas for things that you would have to compute by hand and remember how it works. Like how do I rewrite this as a plus b times i? Maybe if I work at it long enough I can remember, um, but SimPy already knows. It's just in there. Yes? Yeah. 
So you're starting off with like a numeric matrix, of, like a matrix of numeric values. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So, like, you know, if I do sine of, like, uh, import numpy, and I try to take simpy sine of a numpy array, right? Like, it doesn't it doesn't know what the heck it, it's doing because it doesn't know how to deal with this. Um, I'm trying to, do you, do you understand what he's asking? I would recommend like starting with SymPy and then going from SymPy to numeric using Lambda Phi or code printing. It's hard to, to take a numeric function and convert it to a symbolic expression, but it's easy to take a symbolic expression and convert it to a numeric function because there's more information there in the symbolic expression. You know the, the whole structure of the expression. Numeric function is just, is just this magic black box um, as far as most other things that see it is concerned. Is what? Monkey patching. Monkey patching? Well, I guess you can do hacks. Monkey patching is a is another word for hacking, uh, and not something you should do in in uh, in real life. Certainly not something that the uh, the top module on PyPI does every time you import it. <laughs> So every time you import setup tools, it monkey patches just utils. <laughs> That's why Im just importing it changes the behavior of just utils not setup. That's that's a completely different. This is related to what I do for my day job, and me ranting about what I've had to deal with for the past couple weeks. Any other questions? Okay, well, um, we're here all week, um, so if you do decide you want to talk about SimPy or whatever, just track us down, and um, we'll be happy to chat, and come to the talks and sprints, which we mentioned at the beginning. Maybe I should find these slides again. Oh, they're, they're on your computer. Uh, where's my term? Oh, here we go. So... Remember, we have uh, these talks. Um, there's a tutorial tomorrow about the stuff that Jason showed us. Uh, Jason has a, I'm, or Matthew, I'm sure, has a very interesting talk that will uh, probably talk about SimPy. We also both have talks about that are unrelated to SimPy, but um, actually Blaze is somewhat similar to SimPy in the way that it works. Um, and we're going to have a boff, and we'll be at the sprints.